Hi, uh, Romesh Vastu here, Editor in Chief, Side Sequels. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to this for the HR news, HR updates, and conversations with top notch CHROs. The agenda for today's discussion is the chatbots in human resources. To discuss in detail, today we have two distinguished uh, uh, panelists. Let me introduce Mr. Shakun Khanna. Shakun is a Vice President and uh, Head of uh, SAS Alliances and Channels, Asia Pacific at Oracle. And uh, Ms. Janani Prakas. Janani is a Head Human Resources at Quantla Inc. Shakun, uh, if I look, uh, the technology space is uh, getting advanced very fast. Last year, we were talking about uh, major wars. This year, the buzzword is uh, chat GPT. And uh, recently, the Google also launched uh, another uh, chatbot, that is uh, BART. So, uh, could you please explain us uh, what is the chat GPT? Okay, so what is chat GPT? Interesting. Uh, like you said, Ramesh, uh, last year, this time around, the buzzword was around chats. We were just coming out of the pandemic and employee self-service was taking new dimensions and digital assistants or chatbots, as we call them, uh, were the latest in thing. Uh, and they continue to be because more and more organizations are looking at ways and means to create applications that can provide self-service capabilities to both its employees as well as customers. Now, now when we look at uh, chat GPT specifically, I think it's a technology. Uh, we should not look at it as just as a chat bot, but it is a technology. Uh, we all know that uh, GPT in uh, chat GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. So essentially, it's generative AI uh, using artificial intelligence. Now the system is able to give us very, very specific answer to the queries that we run. So how is it different from the world we know today? Today, when we do a search on Google, Google gives us hundreds and thousands and actually millions of links which contain the relevant information. And the onus is on us to go click on those links figure out uh, the content and then decipher uh, the information that we want. Chat GPT using AI and machine learning technology today can give you a very precise answer. So for example, if you were to go and do a Google search on what is Chat GPT, it will again show you multiple links and you will have to read. But when you do the same query on Chat GPT engine, it'll actually give you perhaps a paragraph to the point explaining what it means. Now this capability can have multiple uses. So going back to our earlier discussion of HR chatbots, all those chatbots were earlier pre-programmed with certain answers, you know? So you had certain scenarios or certain questions that you thought your employees may ask and those answers were pre-fed into the system and it was limited to that capability. Now imagine, a chatbot which is enriched by chat GPT kind of technology, which can actually answer very precisely questions in natural language and without limiting itself to the prefed answers. So that in, in brief is what, what chat GPT is to my mind. Uh, Jenny, uh, how do you see the relevance of uh, chat GPT uh, in human resources? Um, a number of aspects, Romesh. Shakun very beautifully articulated and explained uh, what chat GPT is for anybody's understanding, right? Maybe I will take it from there and uh, give a use case of uh, chat GPT in HR. Um, let's say chat bots have been there in HR for the last few years. And we have used it for uh, aspects like reminding, or let's say we are rolling out benefits as a campaign. There are there may be questions that we want employees to get answers for without too much of human intervention. Then chatbots becomes the first uh, licensing agent, right? Now, if it is powered by chat GPT, what we can do, especially if organizations have the capability to buy it and then you know enable it, integrate it with their internal systems, um, we need not pre-feed answers. It has the ability to go search, respond very precisely to whatever is needed. So that's the additional capability that ChatGPT will bring in if we are able to incorporate um, incorporate ChatGPT 
in our chatbot systems within organizations. Um, additionally, it also has uh, deep learning capabilities. So if you give more information um, beyond what is already there, I think it, it can generate new varieties of responses as well, uh, which makes it even more enriched. Uh, Shakun, as uh, I was talking about uh, uh, the Google's uh, newly launched uh, uh, the chatbot, it is a part, so that is also similar to the uh, chat GPT. So what are the other uh, chatbots are coming uh, into the technology space which are similar to the chat GPT? Just about every company today that we know which is in this business is talking about building generative AI capability into its system. So therefore, uh, I will not be able to name specifics, of course, BART and Chatbot GPT are the ones which are in, in news the most, uh, but then there are a whole lot of other applications. In fact, a <clears throat> lot of work is happening in this direction, uh, not only generically, but uh, for specific use cases also. Uh, we are talking about uh, looking at certain kind of developments that are also now within India, uh, looking at uh, such uh, bot capabilities in regional languages, for example, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are uh, multiple issues, you know, as more and more companies are so, developing such applications, uh, uh, pretty much like the broader AI, there are questions around ethical AI, for example. So there are questions around uh, the capabilities of these engines. In fact, just this morning, Economic Times ran an article where they are looking at what could be the implications on uh, content uh, uh, providers and content development, for example. If I put something on the internet, uh, will these bots have an excess and therefore will that become their captive, captive uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, intellectual property and so on and so forth. So I think we are in that early stage of answering those questions, but uh, uh, specifically, I don't know of uh, many names per se, and I think it will not be fair for me to talk about specific brands, but uh, there are a whole lot of them. Uh, because this technology requires very deep computational power, and it is very expensive to develop, uh, in the long run, it will be only very large few companies that will prevail. You know, uh, It is like the search business, search engine business earlier. In so many years, we have seen that one or two companies have dominated. Uh, generative AI capabilities on, on chats will also become uh, dominated by one or two very large players simply because of the kind of investment that is required to create an unreached product like this. Uh, after uh, the discussion over the uh, introductory part of the uh, chat bots, uh, like uh, chat GPT and others, so generally, uh, what are the HR process that can use the uh, chat GPT uh, to optimize the performance? If you can name like uh, recruitment, hiring, then engagement, then what are the other, uh, what are the all the HR process? A number of them, as I'm able to see it, and uh, already we are starting to experiment, Romesh. Um, let me take uh, the context of a startup company, for instance, right? A startup company will have to start uh, building policies, uh, uh, have to put a number of things together. And uh, many times you may not have a startup company having HR professionals from enterprise organizations who have exposure to all of these things. Um, so a great place to start is to just ask ChatGPT to saying, hey, what is, where do I start anything at all? Um, similarly, you can just ask, okay, I would like to build a policy on domestic travel. Can you give me some guidance? And it, it beautifully gives some guidance. So you can even ask, hey, can you build PPTs for me? It says, no, no, I cannot build PPTs, but I can actually give you um, an overview of what titles can come in in different slides. And it gives you um, very good insights in terms of how you can construct something very neatly. Now, um, this is this is a direct uh, use case for any HR professional in a startup company who does not know where to start because you just have a whole lot of things to um, st start and uh, in immediately uh, create an impact, right? So you can use this technology to start somewhere. Now, let me dive into a couple of uh, areas. Let's, let's take talent acquisition, for instance. Um, I think for screening, um, for initial uh, chats with the candidate, 
uh, we can very easily incorporate chat gpt and leverage it um, and uh, therefore if you see some of these processes will go away from um, whoever we may be uh, we may have a person doing those it's not that it's totally new right like some few years back we had robots coming in i remember one or two companies which started doing these initial screening and all that but now chat gpt also can get leveraged for that is what i would say similarly learning if you see um, there can be queries that can be answered um, by the chat gpt um, there can be uh, tracking of employee progress um, generating uh, regular reports anything that is regular in nature process oriented uh, i think all of those can be um, delegated to chat gpt or like shakun was pointing out any other generative ai a lot of newer technologies are coming in as well under this umbrella um, but i think all this can get in there then the classic question is what will all of these people do like we always did we will new learn something new and we will start doing higher order stuff that's how i look at it uh, sakun uh, before starting uh, the use of uh, uh, chat gpt i would like to understand from you as a uh, hr tech professional that how can the hr professional prepare themselves to use the uh, chat gpt uh, in their hr process the first thing would be to go and try it uh, tonight if you have already not uh, you know uh, in 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 today's environment if there is an hr professional out there who has not tried chat gpt trust me i'll tell you you are not inquisitive enough you are not learning at the pace at which you need to learn and you have a risk of redundancy to so so do that the good thing about uh, the technology development today is that it does not require a lot of learning it is something that you learn as you go so you know uh, starting to use is uh, something which is there the other thing uh, what is more important for hr professionals today is that how can you stay ahead of the game so now that we know the kind of uh, promises that uh, a generative ai capability is offering how far can you peep into the future and be ready for it can you come up with three a uh, novel idea is to leverage this technology because remember like any other technology most of the people who are developing it don't even know where all it will be used so when steve jobs created the iphone or the play store uh, he he does not know or he did not know what all people will come up you know it was the human ingenuity that created so many applications and uh, disrupted the world out there so i think uh, it will be the best uh, hr professionals who will think in the future and come up with uh, novel ideas and i think you've talked about a few jenny talked about a few use cases uh, from pre hire to post retire there is hardly any aspect of hr where uh, a technology like generative ai cannot be used leveraged to create a better environment better experience or more productive workforce so i think it is up to people so just to summarize use chat gpt and think how you can use it creatively i have used <laughs> so so it de definitely help us uh, in content writing as well that is that is my part so so uh, if uh, we look at this it is uh, helping for the content uh, writing it is helping even you can also the draft the mail uh, with the help of this you can also uh if uh, describe uh, then it can create the image for you like this so do you think uh, there is also discussion uh, that uh, it may be challenge uh, for some of the jobs it may challenge uh, for the content writers it may challenge uh, uh, for uh, any kind of the job which can be done on the today, community do you think today the, this is really threat or this is just uh, uh, you know a perception there is a very interesting article by yuval uh, nehari today in the uh, in the newspaper where he is saying that i am not that worried about artificial intelligence but i am more worried about human stupidity and mm -hmm. i think it is so so apt human beings have developed the artificial intelligence so we will always be ahead of the game you know uh, Uh, so can for example content writers uh, feel threatened the answer is no certainly not right because content writing is a is an art artificial intelligence is a science based output 
you know so even paintings if you look at it you know ai has been painting or or uh, creating uh, drawings for a while now but has it uh, challenged the human creativity the answer is no what will happen certainly two things low caliber people or people who were not up to the mark in the skills that they were uh, you know working on will not be relevant anymore so again taking your example romesh average content writer may not really be relevant anymore but people who really do original content have the uh, you know knack of it they will only be better off uh, in fact uh, while on one side there is chat gpt and other applications being developed there are other applications being developed to check whether the that the text for example has been generating you are using ai so handmade so to say handmade content will become even more valuable uh, original human thinking will become uh, more more relevant and so on so forth and generally what is your take on this what will be the impact uh, on certain jobs of this chat gpt absolutely uh, i agree with what shakun said um, there are few let me again take an example maybe a few years back uh, when we used to do video conferencing or uh, getting into calls with multiple people you remember we used to have that conference id and a password there were a bunch of people who were technically qualified to do that and then one fine day we got something like skype which came and washed away that entire aspect of it. but they are all still employed now i have seen the transition from skype to video conferencing in organizations with large setups and then one fine day zoom came and covid came everybody were still at home and we had to we had to renew ourselves still make sure we are getting connected but all of those people are still employed right i think human beings have this classic capability to learn um, and they are very agile by nature but we get hardened if we are doing the same thing over and over again so i think uh, some of these uh, technologies will just remind us back to our core qualities of our ability to learn innovate focus go deeper and continuously renew to a newer self that's my answer and it's absolutely not philosophical because we have all seen this journey in our own ways in the last 2 3 years uh shakun uh where you see the biggest uh, advantage of this uh, uh, chat gpt is in human resources so i think again as i said uh, uh first and foremost advantage is around efficiencies and effectiveness something that uh, takes time can be done janani gave a very good example of policy drafting right uh, it can take uh, months or weeks to do a proper policy drafting but using something like ai uh, generative ai one can do it very quickly what is more important is such a technology can help us overcome human biases and heuristics so just to give you an example it was estimated that more than 70% job descriptions for example when they are written in its original format have certain biases either they may not be gender neutral or they may not be very clear or specific in terms of the of the of the job requirements and so on and so forth now that kind of a problem can be taken care of immediately so the companies will will not have to worry about uh, those kind of things you know which is very interesting this will take employee self service to the next level i think uh, what the, what, what employees will be able to do then would be phenomenal it will have a very profound bearing on the learning and development functions of the organization you know how people learn and upskill themselves uh, today uh, we hardly have to depend on a human being to learn or ask something i think it, this will take take the whole thing to the next level uh, lastly i think uh, in terms of organizations ability to generate insights will be phenomenal uh, because remember on one side when you and i use such uh, engines they also capture a lot of data and therefore they they tell a lot about what employees are feeling workforce is feeling and so on and so forth so even uh, things like employee surveys will get a different meaning when people start using this and jerini how do you see uh, what uh, uh, would be the pros and cons of using the chat uh, gpt in human resources 
Yeah, um, certainly the employee experience and candidate experience on which we have already been focusing on for the last couple of years, I think that's going to definitely up its on day. It's going to become better. Maybe it's all going to become digital employee experience and digital candidate experience, so to say. And uh, efficiency is going to be great. There is an element of personalization that many large organizations are able to bring in already when it comes to learning or uh, when it comes to candidate experience. Now that will also get enhanced with the chat GPT or other such generative AI technologies. Now, um, definitely in terms of scalability, because uh, like Shakun was pointing out, only one or two players may, may be there, right? By virtue of the affordability for such uh, um, such sophisticated technologies and the kind of people that will be needed to operate those technologies. Um, so obviously we, with these couple of players, the scalability is also going to be very good. Um, I, I think that these are some of the pros. Now cons, because this is already pre-programmed, the biases of the people who have written several articles from which this has taken in inputs and is generating a response may show up. That's one. With a number of experiments that I have been doing with ChatGPT, I also see that the language is kept very neutral. It doesn't take sides. So you ask, hey, do you think this is good or that is good? It gives a generic response. So there is an element of caution that it's already practicing. Um, so you may not get a black or white responses in a number of areas. Human biases could already be there as part of the response. Accuracy is definitely a huge problem. Like I was experimenting with two numbers, just addition. Um, and I was saying, I was giving a wrong answer and the GPT was saying a right answer. Three, four times, finally it said, sorry, I take this answer. <laughs> this is the answer, right? So such things also can happen. Or it also tries to politely say, no, no, no. I'm sorry if I've committed any mistake, but this is uh, this is the answer. It, it repeats that uh, whatever was the earlier one. Um, finally, privacy concerns. Now with multiple other players coming in and our data is everywhere. Let's say we go to a hotel, we are checking in there. We are going to a, a um, cinema theater. We are going anywhere, I think. All of our data is already there everywhere. Imagine if all of this data is um, kind of integrated and is used for or against, then definitely there is a privacy concern. Um, yes, I think these are some of the immediate ones that I'm able to think of with respect to pros and cons. Uh, Shakun, what would be your uh, uh, concluding remarks? Anything important uh, which we did not touch here? No, I think in conclusion, I would say that uh, like any other technology, uh, it may have certain apprehensions, certain gaps or certain uh, confusions around it. Uh, but in the end, uh, every technology comes and enhances human effectiveness, organizational effectiveness and individual effectiveness. I think we are very lucky as a generation because perhaps this is the fourth or fifth time we are seeing a major transformation in the technology coming in the workplace and we should be the first ones to embrace it. Like always, I'm very glad to see that HR is at the forefront. We as a community are in the position to embrace this technology very quickly, very rapidly and deploy it for the betterment of our, uh, of our employees who will then directly impact our customers. So I think it is very, very promising and I'm super excited to see how it uh, settles down and how it unveils itself. Jenny, any uh, your final comment? I'm actually very curious to see what the future holds with uh, this big change coming in. Having said that, uh, I would uh, reiterate what Shakun initially mentioned. It is a time when we all need to be uh, on the toes when it comes to learning. Everyone has to prioritize uh, learning as their topmost, um, topmost aspect that they need to focus on this year and maybe the coming years. Uh, it is to stay relevant and not just to re stay relevant, but to even have conversations with our next generations, right? Already I'm seeing eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds talking about latest technologies. And my daughter introduces a number of new apps to me being less than 10 years. So um, I think our ability to be socially um, 
conversant with our next generation, both at workplace and outside, depends a lot on our learnability of new technologies and looking at their applications in our day-to-day -day work. Uh, number two is, um, I think we just have to not be afraid. We have to look at our own examples of the past, saying many things happened and we actually crossed all those bridges and we are where we are and we can cross this as well. I think an element of motivation has to be there. We should not get frightened because we'll just have to conquer our fears by facing them. So we better do what it takes to face them and then conquer them. So these are my concluding remarks. Right. So thank you, Sakun and Jenny for joining the conversation and sharing your wonderful thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Romesh. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Shakun. Thank you, Romesh.